it's very common for someone to have breast cancer now at my age. I have found that it's not a rarity anymore. People need to wake up and pay attention, you know, because it's people, you're, they're losing their daughters, so you're losing the babies of the families. So I was diagnosed last November 22nd, two days before Thanksgiving, um, 2005. So that was a delightful Thanksgiving celebration for me and my family, of course. Um, I was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. And um, once you're diagnosed with stage four, you don't go back. You're never downgraded to a stage three or stage two. First, the doctors told me that I had what is called mastitis. Mastitis is uh, something that women who are breastfeeding can generally get. Um, last time I checked, I don't have any kids, <laughs> so I was unsure of how I would have mastitis. So I questioned my doctor, but he just sent me home with antibiotics and a lot of Vicodin. He said, just call me in a week if you don't feel any better. And that's what happened. I called him a week later, tumors kept growing. I kept feeling something growing inside me. Basically went back in and sent me to a surgeon. And the surgeon had said the same thing to me, barely gave me a breast examination. I said, well, I agree with your primary care doctor. Um, you know, I, I still think that this is some weird, strange, unusual, rare breast infection that you have. Could be mastitis, could be something else. Uh, it's uncommon for you to have mastitis, yes, but I still don't think it's breast cancer. You don't, you don't have breast cancer, Stephanie. The reason that they were um, so adamant with me and convincing me that I did not have breast cancer is because of my age. The, the one thing that I kept hearing over and over and over again was, you know, you're Stephanie, you're 30 years old, you're in perfect health. You don't have breast cancer. This is not what this is. I don't believe that's what this is. It's just some kind of breast infection. It's my age. That was a huge factor. And the fact that I walked into their office looking like this, with the exception I had hair. <laughs> but <laughs> What has changed um, in this world for me to have the diagnosis that I have, I believe is the interior and exterior environment. It is the makeup of your environment, whether it's outside your body or your immune system inside your body. It's what's going on with that. There is a reason why I got what I have. There's a reason I got breast cancer at 30 years old when the common age for breast cancer is 60. There's a reason it's not only happening to the mothers and the grandmothers of our society. It's happening to people like me, the daughters, the babies of families, the little sisters, the younger girlfriends. There's something that's going on. There's something that is in the air. There's something in the environment. There's something chemical-wise that we're putting in our body. It's, it's a combination of your interior and exterior environment, and, and it needs to be researched further. We definitely need to find out what those component, the contributing factors are, the components of that, that make up this illness, and why it's happening to the younger generations. I had the pleasure to travel to Washington, D.C. for the National Breast Cancer Coalition Conference. I think because I was the youngest one there attending this, this conference and training, um, and I was the only bald-headed <laughs> female there. They, they really wanted to make sure that um, I was kind of pushed to the fronts of the lines, the fronts of the groups, the first person to walk into each and every congresswoman and man's office because of the impact that they knew and I knew I would make. It's, it's a visual. And when you get a visual of this, um, how could you not be affected? We need to have more funding for research. Um, the Environmental Research Act that the National Breast Cancer Coalition uh, is trying to pass is, is one of those contributing factors that will help get us closer to finding a cure. I mean, it's, it's um, something that needs to be passed. It's something that needs to be enforced. It's something that people need to get out there and support and become aware of it. The Stephanie LaRue Foundation is a nonprofit foundation that I've created to work with all of the other breast cancer organizations, but uh, will specifically be geared toward and focused on women living with breast cancer under the age of 40. So the young survivors, us. My mission, my passion, 
my goals, um, my determination is to educate, educate, educate. I want to educate the medical communities. I want to educate the doctors that uh, are in all of the hospitals so that when someone like me walks into their office next time, they don't say to them, you're too young to have breast cancer. Because I wasn't. I definitely want to educate uh, universities and going in and speaking to all of the, the women that attend universities, high schools. There's so many people out there. There's so many people out there that don't even know that they have it inside them, that it's growing. And unless you get checked on a regular basis, and unless you do your own examinations, you know, hopefully you find it soon enough. Unfortunately, I didn't. I really, truly believe that. I've been chosen. I'm the chosen one. This happened to me for a reason, so I have to do something with it. I can't. Sit by and live through it. And there's some people who can, and they just want to try to get back to their lives. But I feel that I need to do something more. I want to be a voice that is heard, be a face that you can't forget if it will help impact the right people that it needs to be affected, be effective to, then to make a difference, you know, to help us get closer to finding a cure, then I want to be utilized for this mission. Absolutely. I'm doing this. I'm doing all of this because I don't want another young woman. I don't want this to happen to another young woman. It's not right. It's not right what I've been through.